Welcome to another episode of Breaking into Cybersecurity Leadership. Today, our guest is Todd Mitchell. Todd, would you like to give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you got here? Sure. Thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, my name is Todd Mitchell, and I'm the owner of Cybersecurity for Biz. My focus is on helping small businesses, mostly solopreneurs, up to five employees, helping them with their compliance and protecting their customers' information. So I work with a lot of people in the financial industry and the healthcare industry, helping them be a Graham Leach Bliley Act safeguard rule compliant and the HIPAA safe harbor rule compliant, as well as other small mom and pop type businesses. And I really enjoy what I do. I have a passion for working with smaller businesses and I'm the, what drove me into my business is being the, the little guy helping the other little guys basically. And what made you decide to go off and start in your own adventure? Well, I was, um, a retired military and after, uh, after doing 20 years in the Navy, I went to college and got a degree in information assurance, an IT degree with a focus in information assurance. And I was working as a lead engineer on a software project for the Marine Corps and Everything we did was on the secret internet. So it was all very heavily cybersecurity focused as far as the apps and all the information and that they were passing back and forth. And my best friend actually was a disc jockey. He'd owned his own business for 30 something years and he had his database get breached and lost all his information. And nowadays they don't create the albums around anymore. It's all digital. And a disc jockey with no music is useless, really put him in a bad situation. And he asked me to help find somebody that could work with him. And we Googled a bunch of different cybersecurity buzzwords and came up with 20 or 30 different companies and half of them wouldn't work with small businesses at all. And then the ones that did work with small business came back with Oh yeah, we love to work with small businesses. You got to have 250 employees and like 10 million in revenue. And it's okay. That's not a solopreneur with barely making a hundred thousand a year. So long story short, I ended up helping him myself in my spare time. And then over the next couple of years, he found a couple other people that were in similar circumstances that needed some help and brought them to me. And he just kept poking and poking until eventually he convinced me to the corporate life and open my own business and focus solely on bringing cybersecurity to smaller businesses that were getting left behind by the ecosystem of big companies helping big companies. That's pretty much how I got into this business. And that's why I said my, the whole reason why I started it and it maintains my number one mission now is still to work with smaller businesses. So as you're working with these small businesses, what are some other problems that you see with them on a daily basis? So most of the people contact me because of some of the problems that they're experiencing aren't necessarily cybersecurity related, but they, they not directly due to a hacking or things like that. But I get a lot of people contacting me because their insurance won't renew their professional liability errors and omissions or their cybersecurity policies because they can't prove that they're compliant. I get a lot of bookkeepers and tax preparers and things like that are having issues with their insurance companies or with the IRS or whoever other bigger companies that they work with they, because they can't prove that they're sending secure emails back and forth with people's personal information in them. And, and then also I've had a lot of people that are just, they know that they're collecting a ton of personal information that's all could be used to steal somebody's identity. If you think about if you're a homeowner, you work with your mortgage company, the first thing they, they get a hold of you when you're all excited because you just picked out a house. And the first thing they call you up and they want three years of tax statements, three months of bank statements, your 401k plan, your, all your social security numbers to run credit checks on you and everybody in your house. And it's, it's in, in, Looking back, even as a cybersecurity professional, you kind of get caught up in this. You don't realize that these people are just shooting emails going, hey, send me a copy of all this and this. Just scan it on your computer and email it to me. And you're sending these things in PDF over plain email. And it's, that is not secure at all. 
And those in a tax document alone, a 1040 contains everything you need to steal somebody's identity and ruin their life. There's name, address, birthday, social security numbers of everybody in your house. They know where you work. They know how much money you made because that's all in your W-2s. The, you want to get paid faster. So you gave them your bank account number. It's like everything you need to ruin your life on one piece of paper. That's basically what I do is help, help those smaller work out, work from home businesses that are in the financial industry and, and the healthcare industry is mostly mental health professionals. I think since COVID, I've seen an awful lot of them work from home now, instead of working out of a, an office or a hospital, the telemedicine is really easy for them to do. What are some of the ways that you help them? Do you provide them with managed services or a secure platform? How do you help them out? So it's a combination of things because most of these smaller businesses fall into a category where they don't have a huge network with a bunch of employees, computers on the network. So unlike a bigger company, that's more worried about protecting the network and kind of pushing down from there, I focus on the information and what are they doing with it, how they collect it, how they store it, how they transmit it. And then we kind of work from there up. So mostly what I do is go in and give them assessment, see where they're at, take a look at the local, state, federal industry regulations that affect them, which kind of gives us a where we need to be. And then we just basically make a plan to get from here to there. And it's all focused on protecting that information to achieve the compliance. And then normally I roll up my sleeves and work with them and we do it together to get it done. As you're well aware, I'm sure. The misconceptions out there that hackers are somebody in a little hoodie in her mom's basement in Russia, clacking away on a keyboard in the middle of the night. And that's where malware comes from. And that may be true. That's where malicious code comes from, but that's not how you get hacked. You get hacked because of human behaviors. We're the ones that have weak passwords, no backups, write passwords down on a sticky note, stick it on your monitor or click that attachment on that email that you knew was fake, but you're got curiosity, got the best of you and you clicked it anyways, or you fall prey to some other phishing attack or one of those random text messages telling you your social security number is being disabled if you don't click this button right now. So I focus a lot on the human behavior side of it because that's how we can, our frontline defense to keeping ourselves safe is our own behaviors. So is it like a class, a seminar? teaching, teaching them to use the right tools. Is that a lot of what you help with? Not so much classes. Most of it is one-on-one -on -one counseling session. I guess you could call it for lack of a better term. I, I do one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with my clients and we basically go through the checklist of best practices and things that are on the compliance list that need to be accomplished. And then we also, I come into it with a mentality of Cybersecurity best practices need to be implemented in a way that is not too confusing or too difficult for the business owner. Otherwise, they're just never going to do it. They might do it that once while you're looking, and then they're going to immediately forget it after that because it's too confusing or inconveniences them from being able to do their business. I try to work with people to come up with solutions that are easy for them to keep implementing. And then, and we just work together to make a plan. And then I deliver them a written, a written plan so they can see what we've done and what they need to keep doing. I basically work with, work with clients using Zoom meetings and decide what they need to do as far as human behaviors to help protect themselves and also what they need to do for the compliance. And some of that is adding software solutions, but a lot of it is just human behavior wise. And then we try to find solutions that work with the business owners because I don't want them to be inconvenienced and just not do it because it's too hard or too detrimental to their business operations. And so the way I accomplish that is through Zoom meetings and just having consulting sessions where we just work through all these issues one, one at a time and see how they come to fruition. I use risk management also. Every, everybody uses this daily in their lives and people just don't think about it. If you wake up late for work, 15 minutes late for work, or and you got a choice, do you skip breakfast or do you skip a shower? Maybe you got a big meeting, so you can't skip a shower. Maybe you're diabetic and you can't skip breakfast. It's all just oh, a risk thing in your head. 
And I'd try to get people to treat cybersecurity the same way. Look at the risk of not doing this and what could happen. And could this close your business down or is it no big deal? And then, and we use that to decide, you know, how much, how much cybersecurity to implement and where to implement it at. Nice. I love that approach. I guess one that maybe it's a misconception in my head, but how open do you find small businesses to this? And are they able to afford that? Because that's something that you hear on the news that small businesses can't seem to afford this. Um, I've tried to make myself very affordable to small business because that is my only audience. So I've designed my packages specifically just for the small businesses. So I don't have to worry about doing the things that don't necessarily apply to them. Like I was saying earlier, uh, I don't really focus on networks a whole lot because most of my clients, their network is basically a home router. So it's, it's quick five minutes, go in there, check the settings, make sure it's set up correctly and uh, just verify the configurations. So there's not a lot of time involved in that. As far as the big cost driver is mostly just paying for consulting time and working with them. And that kind of helps me keep the cost down to a more affordable. And I also do use the payment plans. I've got it worked out to where I can do a, a small monthly fee to keep the cost in a range that a business can afford. And as the businesses start to go up and the amount of employees start to scale, do you work with managed security providers to help them get some of the tools and the platforms that they need someone to monitor it for them, things like that? Yes, I've actually, I've got a couple of tools in my toolbox right now that took me quite a while to, to get agreements with. And actually, for the same reason that I started my business, you call up, you call up somebody to get some good endpoint detection and response software. And most of the big companies that are recognized brand names that everybody knows, it, you look at their websites and their packages start in bunches of a thousand licenses or whatever. It's okay. I've got six clients with one computer each. I need six individual licenses, not clubs of a thousand. So it took me quite a while to find good solutions, but. I have a couple, and then, like you said, as they scale up, I'm also working with a couple of other people that, that are able to provide more services on a bigger scale because uh, the prices I have are good for one or two employees. But if you were paying this much for every employee for a hundred or two or 50 employees, it would be pretty expensive. As we start to scale for the, the, the types of employees or maybe the types of businesses that are in different sectors. Do you use a similar approach? Do you use a different approach? Or is everyone their own unique approach? I think my, my approach, so first of all, I don't like sales, so I don't do direct sales pitches or anything like that. So I just meet people and make sure they know what I do. The main purpose is just to, in my mind, I go into spreading awareness. So I'm trying to make people aware of the dangers out there and how their behaviors can change some of that, especially dealing with businesses and also even families, how to protect your kids while they're online, things like that. And then uh, when people approach me and say, yeah, hey, this sounds awesome. Can you help me get this set up? Then I basically have a, a conversation with them and find out exactly what it is that they need and which solutions that they're looking for. And if we determine that it's a good fit, then, then I have different plans. I have plans for basic cybersecurity for just people that are doing it because it's the right thing. And there's no real paperwork involved. It's more of just getting things set up and getting them in the right direction. And then I have other plans for compliance that and anybody who's dealt with the government before understands my, my, my inside joke of cybersecurity compliance for the government is 25% cybersecurity and 75% paperwork to prove that you did the 25% cybersecurity. And that's what I mean by, well, the smaller business is doing it because it's the right thing, but they don't have any mandates that they have to meet and don't have to prove it to anybody. We can reduce that. It just focus on the security part and that reduces their costs down. But some of the, uh, the documentation, especially when you start talking about HIPAA and FINRA and Glam Leash Bliley Act, it's, it, you just can't avoid some of that paperwork. And do you help them with POAMs and things like that for those yeah. in the government? Yeah, people trying to get government contracts with the CMC 2.0 and uh, having a, a, po a plan of action and milestones, a POAM. And then 
Also, the other group that has some pretty hardcore requirements are if you are a payroll provider, so if you work in the HR or the financial field that does payroll for other companies and you're submitting that payroll when you have, when you're on the government, or I shouldn't say the government, on the back end of the payroll part, you're interfacing with the IRS's back end. And yeah. they have really been cracking down over the last year, sending people letters going, hey, you want to maintain access coming into our system to put in all these W-2 information and 1099 information? Here's a big old list of cybersecurity requirements you got to meet. And that's been a driver because some of these companies, you work for H&R Black or TurboTax or something like that, ADT, or the payroll systems. They have this big corporate umbrella of all these services put in place. You're a stay-at-home mom working off the dining room table while your kids are in school doing this stuff. You got nobody looking out for you at all. You got to figure it all out yourself. And that's where I come in. Nice. I love that you take care of the smaller companies. For those that are looking to get into a similar role like yourself, they have some cybersecurity experience. They want to help other companies but they don't necessarily want to go up to the big consulting companies. What advice would you give them coming into this field? Uh, so coming into this field, I think if, if you're interested in doing cybersecurity on a smaller scale, like I do, I think you're, there's, you can start your own business if you're nervous about that, which I fully understand. Other places that do similar work or are looking for people with my knowledge set to help them out are some of your government backed business coaching type places, small mm -hmm. business development centers, economic development centers, minority development centers, scores, another big one. It's a big nonprofit organization with retired people acting as mentors. Those type of institutions are typically full of business financial and marketing types and not a lot of people dealing with cybersecurity. Those are good places to, to check out and see if they're interested in hiring somebody that has some cybersecurity background that is there. All the businesses need it nowadays. It's not like the old Next. days where the big companies that needed this stuff. And with regards to setting up the infrastructure marketing, what are some of the challenges in staying alive, keeping your business running. So the biggest challenges that I've run across is just trying to create brand awareness. That's why I love opportunities like this that you're uh, presenting and giving me an opportunity to be heard. It's hard to get your voice out there when I'm trying to compete against the big boys, not necessarily be with the client. You know, I'm trying to reach a bookkeeper. And they're trying to reach the H&R block after the Fortune 500 companies. However, when you go to buy a Google ad and the word cybersecurity costs $6,000 a click, and I don't have, I can't compete with Cisco or IBM or Verizon or AT&T's $10 million a month Google ad budget or whatever it is. There's just no way that really makes it difficult, which is why I go on the way of oh, just providing a good service and just word of mouth and you, you help out a couple of people and encourage them to go tell everybody else how great it was and hope that it brings you in more clients that way. Okay. Use this as your time to get you, get the word out. Where can people get a hold of you? Uh, the easiest way is just to go through my website and set up a consultation or you can email me or call me. I'm pretty flexible. My, What's uh, your website? cybersecurity biz.com Thank you so much, Todd, for coming and sharing what it's like to be a day in the life of independent cybersecurity consultants. Thank you very much for having me.